Welcome to PJ's Worship, a virtual worship experience brought to you by the First Congregational Church of Dudley, Massachusetts, a United Church of Christ church. This week we welcome musical guests David Noggle, Kristen Noli, and our church trio, Bill Pedersen, Chris Robinson, and Sarah White. Well, thank you again for being here today. Thank you to you who are joining us here within this church sanctuary. Uh, and thank you to you who are joining us on YouTube today. Uh, <laughs> we were just having a little bit of laughter here in the sanctuary because I am still figuring it all out. So welcome here to worship for the 6th of June, 2021, the second Sunday of Pentecost. Today's theme is, Where Are You? And uh, those of you sitting right here with me now may think it's a silly question, um, but as we get going on, uh, perhaps not so much so. Um, and even though I don't know exactly where you are watching from wherever you are, uh, know that it's not a silly question and one of the more important questions we could ask. And I further reflect upon today's theme, Where Are You?, in our weekly e-newsletter, PJ's Place. Uh, hopefully you got that just a couple days ago on June the 4th. And on PJ's podcast this week titled, Where Do You Want to Be? So two different questions, where are you and where do you want to be? And that will be sent out to you this coming Wednesday on June the 9th. For those of you gathered with me here in the sanctuary today, and I saw many of you doing this as you were entering today, thank you for placing financial contributions for our church family in that basket in the back of our sanctuary and to you watching from wherever you are. Thank you for sending in your financial contributions here to 135 Center Road in, in Dudley. Um, both uh, those gathered here and those gathered in other places do check out both the website of our wider church family, www.ucc.org, and for our church family, thanks to my wife, Sarah, for maintaining that, updating that week after week, so that you can learn more about everything that we strive to be here. And remember, 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 no matter who you are, no matter where you are along the journey of your life, you are so deeply welcome here. Welcome to Worship Now.
I have to tell you, it is so wonderful, Kristen, to have you at the piano here. And uh, yesterday, I, some, some of you heard me share this already, but yesterday I had the opportunity uh, of being at an event, at an outdoor event, where there were a couple of children from our... Theo, good to see you. Where there were a couple of children from our church family and uh, here today in our sanctuary, there's a couple of children, and how wonderful, wonderful, wonderful that is. That is, it is just good to be here. We're going to have some baptisms starting to happen within our church again, and I just couldn't be happier about all of that. Let's gather our hearts for a time of prayer. God, we have hit the warmer days here in Massachusetts, United States of America, right here on the Massachusetts-Connecticut line. We are so happy, so happy for new ways of being which are opening up, opening up in the world around us where we are, opening up in inner places where we are as well. There's God, we are so happy. We are so happy for moments this past week when uh, many of us, maybe not all of us, but many of us were able to shake someone's hand, to look someone eye to eye in the face again, to get to know one another in a different way once again. We are so happy for all of that, dear Scott. We are so happy for the ability to be able to gather here in this sanctuary where we physically are, many of us, and to be able to gather where we are in other places, some of us, all of us, church family together at this time. So wherever we are, dearest God, as we gather in this moment, wherever we physically are, wherever we are within ourselves, we thank you for your presence among us, being with us in all those places. Hear us now, dearest God, as together we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us away from temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
singing returning on the 4th of July. <laughs> I believe we're going to have communion returning on the 4th of July. And these are all wonderful things. I've already mentioned baptisms will be returning possibly in July, although those parents may prefer to wait until slightly cooler months. We will see for those who are physically in this space, uh, you know that our only air conditioning is a little swirling fan above us, and essentially it's a brick oven that we are in here right now. So good to be here with you all, and good morning, children, good morning, and good morning, and uh, Jacob, I'm waving to you. Hi. <laughs> and so it's good to uh, have a couple of children of a particular age with us, and always good to have children of God of all ages here with us, and good to have children joining us from wherever you are as well. And as always, if any children of a particularly young age would like to sit a little closer, you can, but you are also just fine wherever you are right now. Our puppets have been away for a couple of weeks, and uh, this week, I have brought back our puppet theater, yet I haven't quite brought back our puppets yet. You'll see. I want to show you something about our puppet theater, so come on over and I'll show you. Oh. Things are just starting to feel a little more right? We have a worship workshop, by the way, uh, after worship today at uh, noontime, at noontime, and uh, some folks will be meeting here, and some folks will be meeting on Zoom, and we certainly encourage you to join and participate in that if you would like to be part of what does the future of worship look like uh, within our church family. And I will not be there for that, by the way, just to say that. Well, here we are. Here we are. So I wonder, children, if you have ever wondered what it looks like in back of our puppet theater. I've been showing you the front of our puppet theater for, you know, nearly a year and a half now. And uh, it just dawned on me this past week that maybe you wonder what's going on there, what it looks like in back there, where our puppets are when they are talking with you and with me on Sunday morning. Well, let me show you. I'm, I'm just going to turn it around. It'll take just a second. It's a little heavy, not too, too bad. I can do it. Uh, let's see. That is what it looks like in back, kind of, kind of empty, don't you think? It's kind of, it's kind of empty back there. The pillows got moved for today. We sometimes have pillows there for puppeteers who um, can use a pillow. So I'll turn it back around here. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. There we go. That's about right, I think. So that's what it looks like in back of the puppet theater. This space, this space here gets filled up in the back there 
That space in back there gets filled up when one of our puppeteers with names like Scott and Bob and Sarah and Amy and of others, that space gets filled up when one of our puppeteers comes and brings one of our puppets to life. For example, our friend Bob brings our friend Pirate Jack to life. And when Pirate Jack comes to talk with us, it's Bob who moves Pirate Jack through the curtain and makes Pirate Jack say, R. Well, let's see if I can do it. Let's see. I'm going to try. I'm going to try here. Let's see. It's going to take me just a second here. Let me. Oh, how would you get back here? Oh, who's that got me today? Where's Bob? Oh, so anyway. <laughs> Oh, my. So now you know where the puppets are just before they come and talk with us, to talk with me and you and everyone watching at home. I have a question for you, though. I have a question for you. Now you know where the puppets are, but where are you? That's our big question for today. Where are you? Look around you right now. Where are you? I know where I am. I am sitting in a very fancy rocking chair given to us. It looks like, but well, I don't know if Nichols College gave it to us, but someone gave it to us who loves Nichols College because this is a Nichols College chair given to our church. And, and I'm sitting right here with all of you in our sanctuary. That's where I am. That's where many of you are too. Where are you? Go ahead, look around and tell somebody near you where you are. Where are you? If you're sitting here with me, you could say, well, duh, I'm sitting right here with you in the sanctuary, Pastor John. You could say that. Well, here's something else to think about, though. Sometimes when someone asks you where you are, they also want to know, where are you in your mind? Where are you in your heart? What are you thinking about? What are you feeling? What are you thinking about? What are you feeling? They might want to know a little bit more than just where are you sitting or standing? Well, in the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, God had told Adam and Eve that they could eat fruit. Do you like fruit? What's your favorite kind of fruit, deal? Peaches. I love peaches, too. And God told Adam and Eve they could eat from any tree in the Garden of Eden, except for one of them except for one particular tree, because eating from that particular tree, as the story goes, could hurt them. So God said, don't eat fruit from that, one, just that one tree. You can eat from all the others, just not that one. So guess which tree Adam and Eve ate from? You know, that one, that very one they weren't supposed to. Can you believe it? You guessed it. They ate from the one tree they weren't supposed to. Well, God knew that they did that, yet God wanted them to admit it. So he asked them, where are you? Like hide and seek, right? So they were a little shy. They were a little shy. And they hid because they felt naked, and then all of a sudden they were kind of like, here we are. Uh, sorry. And they felt ashamed 
because they had done that one thing God had asked them not to do. Has anyone ever asked you, anyone ever, ever asked you not to do something? Because they love you. That's why they were telling you not to do that one thing. Not to do that one thing because it could hurt you. Yet you did it anyway. Well, I think we've all done that at one time. I know I have. And you think they know that you did it too. And then they ask you, where are you? Did you do that one thing I asked you not to do? And you feel badly or ashamed, and eventually you say, here I am, sorry. And when that's where you are, I just want you to remember, we've all been there, yet we just try not to do that one thing again. Where you are is where you are, right? Sometimes like the back of our puppet theater, where you are inside can feel really empty. Yet then like puppeteers bringing life to a puppet, people who love us and God who loves us brings new life to us by forgiving us when we need that and loving us always. And when that happens, the sad and empty feeling place we are turns into a happy place where we feel forgiven and loved. Next week, we're going to have a puppet join us from that empty place, and I look forward to that. I hope you do too. But for now, let's pray, okay? Well, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for helping me to know where I am. And not just in a room or outside, yet where I am in my mind and in my heart, what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. And thanks for people I can talk to and trust who help me know where I am and where I want to be. People who forgive me when I make mistakes. People who help me to love. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way When sorrows like sea billows roll Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless and has shed his own blood for my soul it is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well with my soul He lives, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin not in part, but the whole is nailed to his cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. It is well, it is well, 
with my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Lord, hasten the day when our faith shall be light. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trumpet shall sound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well. It is well. With my soul. With my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Well, good to be here with you. Once again, just simply good to be here with you all. Good to have folks walk through the front door and shake your hand, and just to be able to say how good it is to be with you. So before being able to clearly glimpse the future kingdom of God, right? We are called to be the creators of the kingdom of God. We're called to be the creators of, before being able to clearly glimpse that, we must first understand and acknowledge where we are now. Before we can get from here to there, we must fully understand where here is. We must name it to ourselves, often in the presence of others and always in the presence of God. So listen now to this story, to the story of God speaking to the man and the woman in the garden after they had eaten fruit from the one tree God had told them not to eat from, asking them, where are you? Find this in Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15, and I'll read today from the New Revised Standard Version. They, meaning Adam and Eve in this story, this ancient creation story, Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking. Imagine what that would sound like. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife, that's the way it's written, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, "Uh, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me. She gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent! 
the serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. I bless the reading and the hearing of these words, God, as we grow to understand their meaning for ourselves. May they help us to honestly answer for ourselves the answer of where we are so we may more clearly glimpse where it is you desire us to be as we follow Jesus on the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By the way, some of you uh, in the sanctuary here with me heard me say something that you at home have not heard yet, which is that yesterday, just yesterday, I had the opportunity of being uh, with some folks in this wonderful outdoor event, and, uh, and the records and burpee uh, traveling petting zoo was there, and, um, and there was a giant uh, boa constrictor there as well. And I have made, this just came in now, I hadn't planned on sharing this, but I'm, I'm just reading about the poor, what is called a serpent here, but it's a snake. Um, I don't dislike snakes. And by the way, I like apples a whole lot too. And, uh, and I have made two clear mistakes in the years that I've been pastor here, but it can, in terms of leading worship, I mean, more than two, but I mean, two really big ones. And uh, one was this Sunday, I, I think I may have preached from this particular text or a similar text, and I called on the Records and Burpee folks, and I had a snake here, uh, up front here in a in a like a terrarium and that's where it was but then I also didn't let anybody know that I had Lee who works for record and burpee she was sitting in a in a pew uh, about three quarters of the way back and at a certain point in the sermon I had worked it out with Lee that it, it, she had brought a particularly large snake, much larger than the one up front, and she was going to drape it over my shoulders, and I was going to walk through the sanctuary with this and make this point about snakes and how snakes got this really bad rap in the Bible and try and make sense of the whole thing. I thought it worked really, really well. I'm not scared of snakes. I'm scared of other things, but not snakes. And, uh, well, someone pulled me aside after worship and said, Pastor John, I love you, but you ever do that again. I am, I am terrified of snakes, and you ever do that again, and especially without letting me know in advance, and I am out of here. And point taken, I made a little bit of a mistake. I'm, I'm taking boundary awareness training again through the... Southern New England Conference of the United Church of Christ, and clearly I unintentionally crossed the line. I'll tell you the other story another day. But anyway, I don't think the point of the story is that we're supposed to hate on snakes or apples, just to say that. So let's dig in a little deeper. Have you ever looked at a diary, I, I actually am curious, so feel free to raise your hand. Have you ever looked at a diary that one of your grandparents or one of your great-grandparents or maybe a great-great-grandparent kept? Have, have you? A few of us, a few of us. Um, I can't see your hands at home. Uh, oftentimes, this is the case in my family, my great aunt was particularly good at keeping a diary, like every day. Um, but oftentimes those diaries written by very hardworking people, people who physically work really, 
hard. That was the case with my great aunt working on the farm and then walking to her job at the floor shop and walking home for lunch and walking back and walking home and working some more on the farm. There wasn't a whole lot of free time in the day. And the diary entries weren't filled with, you know, thought-provoking tales or, or deep introspection or, or musings about the state of the world, things that I sometimes include in a, in a journal, right? I call it a journal. Um, what might be done about it, you know, nothing. These diaries sometimes, maybe not always, there are definitely exceptions to what I'm saying. But oftentimes these diaries just state the facts of the day. My great aunt's diary entry might say the date, the day of the week, give you the weather forecast, you know, let you know what she ate, you know, she planted in the garden, and then maybe a little snippet about what's going on. Often a diary entry from uh, someone else might say something like this, Sunday, June 6th, 5 a.m., got up, milked the cows, 7 a.m., had oatmeal and baked beans for breakfast, mmm, 8 a.m., Planted beans after breakfast. 9 a.m. Thought of going to church. 9.30 a.m. Thought on it some more. 10 a.m. Stayed home. Hung out the laundry. 11 a.m. It rained. I cursed. 11.30, hung the laundry inside, cursed again. 8 p.m., spent the day frustrated, went to bed exhausted. These folks took God's question in the garden seriously. They wanted to be prepared should God come calling. Where were you at 10 a.m. this past Sunday morning? Well, let me check my diary here. Let me check my, oh yeah, I wanted to be in church, but I had to plant beans, hang the laundry, then it rained, you know, one thing after another, just couldn't make it. Sorry. But seriously, it was important to those folks, important to remember where they were. And I think that looking back, Think about this time, by the way. Think about the last 15 months. Someone's going to come to you. Someone's going to come to you at a certain point and ask you, what was that time like for you from March 2020 through whenever exactly it felt like it was really truly on the other side of this pandemic time? I think looking back in this way gives folks in the past and, you know, gives them a sense of accomplishment when they look back, right? And I think it can do that for us too over time because, you know, we're going to look back on this time and we look back at other times and there are unwritten stories within stories among the details of those events, it also helps them consider folks in the past, where they were within themselves, and hopefully gives them hope for where they are going. If we're facing a tough time right now, we can look back and we say, well, look, look how I walked through that other time. When you get that sense that God is speaking to you through the circumstances of your life, asking you, where are you? Can you answer? Where are you? Where, where are you right now? Are you standing next to that one tree that you know that for you is that one tree that you really should not be eating from? What are you going to do? 
Are you going to... Are you going to eat the fruit anyway? Not eat the fruit? Or perhaps you're standing next to some great opportunity you feel called to pursue, yet you find yourself frightened to move forward and become who you know God is calling you to be. What are you going to do? Move forward? Not move? Today and on other days before and after this day, Students are graduating from high school. I, I've lost track of this a little bit. I think today is Shepherd Hill, right? And maybe some other local towns. I don't know. I think Bartlett is Friday. I was with a young man graduating from Bartlett yesterday. Students are graduating from high schools and colleges and universities. And following those events, the newly graduated will face Many tempting trees bearing much dangerous fruit. They will also face trees filled with wonders and miraculous opportunities. And at each moment, standing near whatever tree, it will be like Adam and Eve standing in the Garden of Eden, confronted with so much abundance of creation, beauty, possibility, opportunity, love, and temptation. And at each moment, I pray for those young people as I pray for each of us to occasionally hear God still speaking to us from within and asking, where are you right now? Where are you? It's important for each of us to ask ourselves that question maybe every day. Where are you right now? How are you doing? Graduation day, congratulations. Standing next to your personal tree of temptation, walk away. Just another day, no such thing. Never underestimate the importance of a day. Yearning for more freedom, total freedom, freedom without lim limits. Are you sure? Remember the place Adam and Eve were privileged to protect. The place that Adam and Eve were once privileged to protect now needed to be protected from them. And that's our story with the earth in many ways here in 2021. What Lutheran pastor, Reverend Nadia Boltz Weber, someone I hold in particularly high esteem, who some of us were blessed to hear speak at the annual meeting of the then Massachusetts Conference of the United Church of Christ in 2015. She said the following in her Ash Wednesday sermon back in 2014. She said, and I quote, she said, I think that liberals tend to think admitting we are sinful is the same as having low self-esteem. And then conservatives equate sin with immorality. So one end of the church tells us that sin is an antiquated notion that only makes us feel badly about ourselves, so we should avoid mentioning it at all. While the other end of the church tells us that sin is the same as immorality and totally avoidable if you can just be a good, squeaky clean Christian. Yet when sin is boiled down to low self-esteem or immorality, then it becomes something we, can, we, we ourselves can control or limit in some way rather than something we are simply in bondage to. The reality is that I cannot free myself from the bondage of self. I cannot by my own understanding or effort, disentangle myself from self-interest. And when I think that I can, I'm basically trying to do what is only God's to do, end quote. Sometimes when we hear God's still speaking voice, it's wonderful and affirming, supporting us being right where we are. 
And we shout, here I am, Lord, right over here. Yep, that's me doing this awesome stuff. Thanks for helping me get here on this graduation day. Thanks for helping us get here with this newborn child. Thanks for helping me get to this new place in life that I never thought I'd be able to get to. But then at other times, we hear God's still speaking voice. And we feel rather naked. And we just have to say, here I am. Here I am. By that one tree, again. You know, the one you told me not to visit ever again or I could die. Yep, I'm sorry. Thanks for saving me again. But the good news, Jesus is there too with lots of Holy Spirit. You're helped to your feet again. You stand, you walk, and where you are isn't where you always have to be. This is where you are now. Where might you and we be tomorrow? We're in this journey together, all of us, walking together from where we now are to where we yearn to be. So when you hear me ask, where are you, do me a favor if you're comfortable doing so, and please respond by saying, here, by this tree, I am here. Well, let's begin. Like Adam and Eve surprised in the garden, we too may be surprised one day by the voice of our still-speaking God. And what will we say when the question comes? Where are you? Here, by this tree, I am here. And there are moments, ones we want to show, ones we want to celebrate, yet then there are those moments the ones we'd rather hide from God and others. And yet, God's question remains, where are you? Here, by this tree, I am here. The question never stops being asked, spoken in the background of every moment of our lives, where are you? Here, by this tree, I am here. And what of this tree? What questions does God's question urge us to ask? Is the fruit of this tree healthy and good? Is the fruit of this tree a fruit which needs to be shared? Or is the fruit of this tree poison for us and poison for others? And so it becomes our responsibility to protect ourselves and others from this tempting yet deadly fruit. Where are you? Here, by this tree, I am here. God, help us to get real with ourselves. Help us to know where we are. Yet also help us know that wherever we are, you are there too. Your grace surrounds us, heals us, forgives us encourages us and makes us whole. Bless us here, God, right here by this tree where we are. Amen. Oh, 
us so lovely to have been able to be together with you like this here where we are. Let us join our hearts in prayer. God, when you ask us where we are, help us know the truth, whatever it is, to the answer of your question. So from this place, we may ask ourselves, is this really where we want to be? Jesus, we ask ourselves, are we on the road you call us to be on? Or have we wandered off the road? Holy Spirit, inspire and encourage us. Give us the courage to name what needs naming. The answer to God's question of where we are. So we may once again know where we want to go. Be our GPS, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. Bring us home to you and to ourselves. Amen. Well, I hope you do something to enjoy this day. I hope you spend some time outside. I will encourage you, and I say this with some personal experience, I was an hour and a half in direct sunlight with a bald head leading an outside service yesterday, and my head got a little bit burned. I love being outside in the summertime. Put some sunscreen on. Put a hat on. Just a little safety warning from Pastor John here. But whatever you do this day, enjoy yourself. Be good and kind to one another. God bless you where you are with whatever you need. Forgiveness, gentleness, kindness, healing, or hope. God keep you safe and well. God's face shine upon you through the faces of all and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>